Squid Game is now the most watched show on Netflix and the Rockstar is taking off all their classic Grand Theft Autos off the sale. That and so much more on this week's Entertainment Roundup. Let's get into it. What's up guys? Welcome to That Freaking Geek and this is the Entertainment Roundup. It has been a minute. I kind of, uh, let's just say died. <laughs> so I just got really sick and uh, it's been a minute since I've done this and so I'm sorry if you missed it. If you did, I love you for missing it I guess. Um, but I'm very excited to get right back into it. If you don't know what this is, I'll be covering news that happened within the entertainment world, focusing on gaming, movies, and TV series. Um, but there is not a lot of gaming stuff that happened this week, but nevertheless, let's get into some game news. Starting off with a video game I care very little of, but the rest of the world, you guys really enjoy it, and that would be the huge soccer video game you all know as FIFA. The thing is, is that they might change their name. And the reason for it is that the federation, the football federation, basically are like, listen, if you want to carry on using our name, you have to give us way more money than you are right now. And that figure is about $1 billion. The New York Times says that FIFA is seeking more than double what it currently receives from EA Sports. According to the people with knowledge of the talks, a figure that would increase its payouts from the series to more than $1 billion for each four-year World Cup cycle. If you think that is a ridiculous number, it is very much indeed, and that is why EA is considering changing the name. But let's be honest, I don't think that the sales would be as great without that FIFA name. It's iconic. People are buying it because they know it so well. Whether or not they're going to keep it, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Well, the scene is set. A great playing service and a vibrant atmosphere. And when you bury it in the back of the net, make bigger scenes with a stadium full of fans. After all, that's what the game is all about. FIFA 22, powered by football. One of the biggest news of last week had to be that Rockstar finally announced the remastered of the trilogy, a definitive edition of the classic Grand Theft Auto games. M meaning not just uh, like G GTA 1 and 2, we're talking about GTA 3, G GTA San Andreas, and GTA Vice City. Not the actual tr original trilogy, but rather the trilogy that we all know and love from the PS2 era. But the thing is that make, making the news a little spicy is that we don't really know much about it. And to make it worse, that they're actually taking off those classic games off all the, the storefronts on Steam, on the PlayStation Network, on the Xbox. They're just taking it off right now. And the thing is, is we don't know how well of a remaster they're doing. Are they going to pull the Nintendo and just kind of slap together very bare bones remastered and give us something that's worse of experience than what we experienced back in the classic PS2 days? We don't know. And so fans are a little bit worried. And to make things even worse is that there is a, a listing that the game will cost $70, which is around 1,200 Rand for games that are really old. And so we're wondering what on earth is Rockstar doing? Because we just don't know. What are these games actually going to look like? Are they going to be that much improved to warrant to such a uh, like full price, price tag? We, we don't know. Um, but I'm really looking forward to it. I just have a little bit of hope that Rockstar are not going to going to do, do a dirty one and actually give us some really good looking uh, remasters. But once again, we'll just have to, say it with me, wait and see. One day, I'm going to save your ass and you're probably going to want to kiss me. <laughs> like I said, there isn't a lot of gaming news right now, so instead, I thought I'd give you my initial thoughts on Far Cry 6. A lot of people have been asking me, hey, is it anywhere near as good as the last few? And is it even like on par with maybe Far Cry 3? Well, a full review will come out from the game eventually when I get to play it. Right now, I've only played kind of one third of the game and I have to say that I'm really enjoying it. The Island Yara is absolutely gorgeous, giving us a very much a Far Cry 3 vibe with its, with its tropical landscape. But the difference here is that it is a island that is at war with itself because the dictator the Yaren president is very much saying, listen, this is my island and I'm going to do what I want with it. And so this tyranny that is coming from the classic actor who we all know from Breaking Bad, he is doing a fantastic job so far in Far Cry 6. Once again, I've only played one third of the game. And so for now, just giving you my initial thoughts, I'm really enjoying it. I would say, I already say, I recommend you buying it because I think so far from what I've played from purely from gameplay, I think it's one of the best Far Cry's we've had in a while. But my full review will come out soon enough, and so look out for that. Hey, look at what you made. Ah, I'm gonna run this 
The president before what as this entertainment roundup drops uh, as you're watching it on your phone screen or your tv screen or your uh, laptop screen however you're watching this right now the dc fandom has probably happened and that's probably the big news right now the thing is is that it's happening as i film this and so i have no idea how well it did i'm going to presume it's fantastic maybe tell me right now in the comment section no alec it was terrible it was three hours of trash i don't know but I'm really looking forward to everything that's being announced there. Uh, obviously, the big one would probably be the, the Batman trailer. That's ever, getting everyone really hyped up. I'm also really looking forward to the video games that are finally being kind of shown off. We kind of got uh, a little bit of uh, Gotham Knights, but I'm expecting we'll get a little more grounded stuff at this time. Who knows? Um, right now, we're probably showing off right now the gameplay. Does it look good? I hope it looks good. It probably does look good from the last time I saw it. It's, it's looking, does it look worse? Oh my gosh, don't tell me it's actually looking worse. I don't know. Anyway, but what I'm mostly excited about is probably the Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. We got a cinematic trailer. That's all we have from it last time. But right now, DC fandom, I'm expecting proper gameplay, whether it's a trailer, whether it's a game, gameplay clips. Oh wow, look at that. Look, whoa, whoa, this is looking really good. Or really terrible i don't know once again i'm I, I don't know what's actually happening but i'm presuming i'm playing some really nice or some really average gameplay over my voice um but yes thank you so much i know that this is exactly what you want out of the entertainment roundup you want me to give you fresh news in the moment and this is me trying because yeah i'm gonna go watch venom now so i can't really wait for it not gonna make it. Alright, moving on to movie news and some TV series news. Some stuff I actually know about and not just presuming is gonna be news. I don't know. Anyway, going right into it, uh, Tom Holland has uh, talked a little bit more about his uh, third Spider-Man film, No Way Home, and he is saying that he is treating this as the end of a franchise, the end of the trilogy, the end of the home trilogy of Spider-Man movies, whatever that means. But he went on the record and he said this, we're all treating No Way Home as the end of a franchise, let's say. I think if we were lucky enough to dive into these characters again, you'd be seeing a very different version. It would no longer be the Homecoming trilogy. Now that is very interesting. What does that mean? Does that mean this is the end of the Spider-Man films? I don't think so. They're making a lot of money. Tom Holland is still young enough to play the teenage Spider-Man hero we all know and love. And so who knows, but it's probably maybe going to look a little bit different the next time we see the red superhero. But once again, we'll just have to wait and see. We tampered with the stability of space-time. The multiverse is a concept about which we know frighteningly little. problem is you trying to live two different lives. The longer you do it, the more dangerous it becomes. <laughs> Netflix is doing what Netflix does well and giving us TV series we weren't even asking for. That is right, we're getting another spin-off series that we didn't know we wanted. Do we want it? Uh, wait, hang on, what, what are we actually talking about here? We're talking about that 70s show. It is getting a spin-off series called uh, the 90s show that uh, I mean fair enough why not uh, returning is a lot of uh, not a lot of the actors sorry but rather just Kitty and Red Foreman the the parents who are now looking after their son uh, Eric Foreman and uh, and Donna their children they had they had a child and basically the child is coming through for a summer kind of holiday and they're going to look after the kid and that's what the series is going to be centered around who knows if any of the the main cast will return for the series for now all we know is that it's just the, the parents who we know are going to return but the rest of the cast there is no confirmed but what we know for now is that netflix is, is developing it and probably going to be filming it very soon and i'm personally looking forward to it i really enjoyed the 70s show i'll take that 90s show but once again we'll just have to take it with a grain of salt right now because we don't know if it's actually going to be any good down the street The same old thing We did last week Not a thing to do But talk to you oh, yeah. 
Unless you've been living underneath a rock, then you probably know about Netflix's biggest show right now, and that is Squid Game. And surprising absolutely everyone, including myself, it is now the most watched Netflix show right now, beating out juggernauts such as Stranger Things and The Witcher and the previous uh, uh, kind of holder of the crown of the most watched show, and that would be Bridgerton. Bridgerton had 88 million views. And what views mean basically is that Netflix kind of classifies as someone watching the first two minutes of the first episode. And so maybe a lot of people just started watching, which I'm really hoping that's what was okay with Bridgerton and thought this was trash and moved on. But who knows, it is, it, that was the biggest show, but now it is Squid Game beating it with 111 million views. That is absolutely insane. This South Korean show has gone on to get a lot of attention. And I watched the show, I thought it was good. A lot of people are really loving it and it, it deserves some of the praise it's been getting. Does it deserve the most watched show? I don't think so, but if you do, good for you. But that's it from this week's Entertainment Roundup. I am so happy that I get to share the news with you. Uh, but that's it from me. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.